I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening. And if you're watching this, I also hope that means that our very last SHOT Show video, our 86th SHOT Show video ran on TFB TV Showtime, noon Pacific time today. I think that should be the last video. We're done until next year. You guys might be saying, thank God. But me, I love SHOT Show. The team loves bringing you guys content from Vegas every year. Never forget, we weren't YouTubers who became gun guys. We are gun nerds who were forced into YouTube by our bosses nine years ago. We love the show. Time for the top 10 things that are not guns at SHOT Show. Honestly, I feel like this year, SHOT Show gun-wise was okay, unless you're a lever action dork. So what I'm trying to say is that I think this is the first year since I've been going to SHOT Show back in the last Orlando show, 2009, that I feel like I'm more excited about some non-gun items than I am about actual gun items. We're gonna do this lightning round style. It'll be fast, I always am, if you know what I'm saying. Some people say premature, I say high intensity. And obviously when I'm at the show, I focus on gun stuff, so I didn't get to go check out the really cool accessories. I also dabble in my spare time as a blade boy don't tell anyone that. I saw zero knives, which sucks for me. If you think I missed something cool at the show or it should have been on this list or there's a cool knife, please let me know in the comments so I can check it out. All right, let's go. Top 10 things that are not guns, no particular order. Number one. Sup, sure fire haters. James Reeves with one of my favorite people talking about one of my favorite flashlights, the Stiletto from Surefire. Surefire Stiletto Pro 2. Son of a bitch. These things are expensive. My God. But I'm not aware of anyone else doing what Surefire is doing. That is making a durable and blinding white light that slips into your pocket due to its flat shape. And when I mean blinding, not making this up, took this to a force on force class a couple of years ago. This female instructor asked me to stop strobing her in the middle of an exercise because it was so, so bad. No wonder you guys watch this channel. The jokes really write themselves here, and I'm always the butt of them. For a brief second, really, I thought about lying and telling you guys that I got paired up with a Marine or something for this force-on-force -force training, but nope. Let's partner James up with the 32-year-old woman so it's a fair match. Yeah, it's not so funny whenever you're getting a lumen load blown in your face by the Skrillex concert I've got in my front pocket now, is it? For me, form factor is everything. I'm not wearing a goddamn fishing vest. I'm not buying cargo pants a size bigger to accommodate like a D-cell mag light and a bunch of bullshit. I only carry one key at all times. I'd rather pay a few extra dollars, not look like I found my clothes outside, even if I get locked out of my house from time to time. Number two, Blue Force Gear Tiger Stripe Sling. It's a Vickers sling, as in Larry Vickers, who didn't do nothing wrong. The man just has a foot fetish for exotic machine guns, but ye without sin, cast the first stone NUR 63. Mm. Tasteful black polymer hardware, black pull tab. This is from the TFP TV limited edition. That was only for our supporters. Vietnam tiger stripe. Other than that, it's a standard Vickers sling. What makes this special is this was my idea. They told me it was a bad idea at first. Now look at us, we made it to the big show. Petition to portmanteau the Reeves Vickers collab sling into the Reeker sling in the comments below. Number three, BNT Titanium Hub Compatible Surefire Mount. Those of you who care about this realize the magnitude of the statement I just made out of my mouth. Those of you who don't understand what I just said, there's a 90% chance that you won't give a shit if I explain it to you, so I'll just leave it at this. If you have a hub compatible suppressor, you can now use Surefire muzzle devices thanks to your Uncle Carl Brueger. Number four, Magpul Transparent Magazines. I'm probably going to blow half a paycheck on these and for no good reason. What do they do better than the hundreds of other opaque P-Mags that you have now, James? If you ask me this question, then it's never bothered you that the Austrians have had perfectly functional and incredible looking swag-lucent waffle mags since the 70s. You've never looked covetously at a Swiss SIG 550 series with semi-clear mags and coupler tabs. Your heart has never raced at stripes of copper and brass viewed through a topped up G3630 rounder. Even the Poles, the Poles have arguably the finest translucent magazine of them all, the FB Radom Mint Green 556 AK mag. If you're asking me why anyone would want clear P mags, you're asking me to speak for a group of people that you are not a part of and that you will never understand. You disgust me.
Why can the Europeans have this for decades and not us? We're Americans, goddammit. Fortunately, it's a moot point now. Magpul has said that these translucent mags will pass the same battery of tests that the opaque mags will. Translucent mags are historically weaker than opaque magazines, but I guess those Magpul boys done got it figured out. We may be in last place for the invisible mag space race, but that's one small step for man and one large step for mag kind. Five for 5.11. Is that where the logo is? Five. Five for 5.11. 5.11 is a sponsor of the program. They have been for years. They paid for us to go to SHOT Show. You guys know that I love 5.11. Is 5.11 perfect? Absolutely not. Products can be hit or miss like most large gear companies these days, but there are definite hits that came out of this show. Never in my life would I think myself, James J. Reeves, would be excited about a glorified polyester jacket, especially with patch pockets. But the 5.11 Travel Blazer looks dope as hell. Tactically minded, set up to carry a cat, a knife, even wires for comms, plus it's wrinkle free, and it looks really good. Not making this up, I had no idea my dad had been watching nine years of TFB TV videos because the first time he ever brought it up to me at all. A few days ago, after the 5.11 Roundup video ran, he called me and asked me how to get one of those blazers. You guys have also been blowing it up in the comments too. We're all pumped about it. For what it's worth, I'm six feet tall, 29, 30 inch waist, 42 inch chest. The medium fits me almost perfectly. Actually up here it's perfect. Might get the waist dialed in just a couple of inches for the perfect fit. Don't f this up 511. This one could be awesome. Number six, the stash shoe, which I co-designed with 511. It's a deconstructed tactical van style shoe, meaning that unlike the Norris, you can compress it and fit it into a backpack or in luggage without it weighing a ton or taking up much space. The black ones are good because you can dress them up, dress them down, work them with that blazer if you want. Vibram sole, interchangeable insoles, sneaky little pocket in the tongue for cash, suicide pills, or fun dip. This one will be available in wide sizes, at least that's what I've been told by 5'11 at the end of the year. And number seven, a shocker for me, the Sigurd, Sigurd? From 5'11's premium VXI collection, looks really, really, really good. Breathable material, rugby collar you can fold under, flap down, pop up, with a subtle and tasteful V-neck collar. Hands down, other than the performance pocket tee, this has been my most favorite shirt from 5'11 ever. It's made to be worn by itself or under a plate carrier. I think this is mostly going to work for the guys who are fit, but I see this as like a fashion forward and tactical Nike dry fit polo. So if that works for you, this will work for you too. It's what I'm wearing in these last day of SHOT Show interviews. At $60, it's also about 20 bucks cheaper than most Nike dry fits too. This one, seriously, James J. Reeves stamp of approval. Number eight, Rugged Surge X for two reasons. One, this is like two suppressors in one for your rifle. Total revamp of Rugged famed surge suppressor that started it all but mainly the number two reason because Callie will absolutely bitch at me tomorrow morning if she sees this video and I don't mention this product number nine the new primary arms GLX PLX whatever the high-end one is the one to eight X I've had a pre-production copy of it for months now. It's 1500 bucks, which is pricey, but Hop and I both agree it's really good. Hop's a real optic stickler. It's a good combo of lightweight, clear, easy to use. And for 1500 bucks, if you compare everything else kind of in the same performance range, this is actually on the low end of the price scale. Really good. I was excited to see it formally unveiled. I think it's on back order at Primary Arms. Number 10, Silencer Co. Spectre 9, 100% titanium suppressor that works with 9mm, 300 blackout subsonic, or supersonic. That's a big deal. Most 9mm cans will be rated for subsonic 300 blackout, but this will work with super. Is it going to be loud as shit? Probably. So why do you want it? One, it's still a lot quieter than a naked gunshot. Two, it'll fit on your pistol or your rifle without having to use a Nielsen device or removing that Nielsen device whenever you swap it onto your rifle. Most suppressors are so heavy, they require a piston or a Nielsen device to add recoil so the gun will cycle if it's a tilting barrel action like 90% of handguns out there. This one's so light, it doesn't need a Nielsen device. One of the trade-offs, less internal volume for reducing noise, but it's a trade-off I can live with in exchange for small size, lightweight, simplicity for swapping from gun to gun. Actually, I forgot one. The best thing that I saw at SHOT Show 2024 that was not a gun, my team. My boys, we normally run a six-man team, me, my brother and hetero life mate, Ryan, my oldest twin sons, Hop and Luke, although Luke looks a little bit like the milkman. I don't know how that happened. 
Adam, a true professional who is far too talented to be doing work for the shitty YouTube channel, even if he didn't return the rental car this year, and Hertz reported it as stolen and called me at 6 o'clock in the morning at the show. We missed our boy Patty Cuts this year because he was on deployment or in flight school or some such shit. Still, with a five-man team, we cut 86 videos at SHOT Show 2024. Fucking amazing, and that's all because of these boys right here. This is my team, this is my family. I am so proud of these guys for putting together the undisputed best coverage of SHOT Show on YouTube, or TV, or Netflix, or whatever. Finally, I saw a whole lot of you guys. I know I've said this before, but in case you haven't heard it, if you see me at SHOT, if you see me in the street, if you see me anywhere but a European whorehouse, stop me and say hello. You're the reason why I'm here, and I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for another SHOT Show. People bitch and say, oh, I'm so tired of SHOT Show. Oh, once you've seen one SHOT Show, oh, you've seen them all. Okay, stay the fuck at home then. There are better years, there are worse years, but any SHOT Show year is a good year. I co-founded this channel on my birthday in January 2015. I can't wait to see you guys for the 10-year anniversary of TFB TV in 2025. That's it for SHOT Show. But... Make sure you subscribe to TFB TV Showtime right now. Go over there and sign up because our coverage of EWA and Enforce Tech in Nuremberg is only a couple of weeks away. It's the European Shot Show. See you guys in Germany. Thanks for watching. Take care.